Top 10 Worst Trades in NBA History. Hmm. This video is brought to you by one of the millions of J-Rock's fans, Storm Shadow. He requested that J-Rock take a look at this video, and so J-Rock will grant your request. Now, Storm Shadow, you go, you electrify, layeth the smacketh, downeth on all their candy asses. Come on back, and let's check this thing out. Hi, J-Rock fans, come back! What is happening in 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 with the millions <laughs> and millions of J Rock fans from all over the world? That's right, baby. J Rock is here, and we're about to check out the top ten worst trades in NBA history. A couple of trades have gone down uh, over the over the uh, off season. You know, Russell Westbrook is on his way to LA. A lot of speculation on whether or not this team will be able to fit together. How will, you know, Russ fit with LeBron and Anthony Davis. They also brought in Carmelo. Uh, they brought back Dwight Howard. So we're going to have to wait and see what those is like. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to have to wait and see what's going on. A lot of signing trades. I know Kyle Lowry went to the Heat. They looking pretty good. Lonzo Ball. Uh, DeMar DeRozan. They went to the Bulls. A lot of things going on in the offseason. And uh, y'all know the Warriors, Clay is coming back. There's some speculation that Ben Simmons is wanting out of Philly because of how they've treated him, um, because of the way he played in the playoffs. And, you know, there's some thought that, you know, maybe the Blazers could get a package with uh, Dame Lillard to get Ben Simmons in uh, Portland and Dame in Philly. But, just talk at this point, but we'll see what happens. But let's check out the top 10 trade, worst trades in NBA history. See how they affected these teams. Let's check it out. It's hard to be a general manager in the NBA. You're relying on future projections and player development when you're making critical decisions, and sometimes those projections don't pan out favorably. Drafting and trading players often make some GMs look incredibly smart. That dude, and others, genius. Not so smart. Here are 10 of the worst, mind-boggling, and lopsided trades in NBA history. James Harden to the Houston Rockets, 2012. James Harden was drafted with the third overall pick in the 2009 NBA draft. One how was that, the, how was that the worst? Westbrook and two years after they got Kevin Durant. Oh, yeah, James because... Third season, OKC reached the finals, and even though they lost to LeBron James and Miami Heat, they were still extremely young and had the brightest future of They didn't want to uh, pay the luxury tax. The I think it was like $4 million. Dollars. Harden was coming of the best year of his career and had won the sixth man of the year award. His contract was up for extension after the finals. Yeah, but he ain't played well, well in the finals, though. They give him a max deal because they already paid Durant and Westbrook and even Kendrick Perkins, who got a $32 million extension. Harden's max deal would have been $60 million over four years, and the team decided to lowball him and offered 55 and a half. 4.5 million less. Negotiations went on deep into the summer and ultimately fell through. Houston and its GM Daryl Morey smelled blood and quickly orchestrated a trade that brought Harden to Houston. And OKC got Kevin Martin's big contract and awkward looking shoot, along with Jeremy Lamb and a couple of draft picks. Since the trade, James Harden scored more points than anybody else in the NBA and won an MVP award. OKC never reached the finals again, and for $4.5 million, they ruined the best young core in the league, which would ultimately lead to the departure of both Durant and Westbrook as well. Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett to the Nets 2013. There is an unspoken rule among GMs in the league. When Danny Ainge calls and proposes a trade, don't answer, as he's going to try to Jedi mind trick you into accepting a trade that's going to go badly for you and great for him. It's safer to just say no in advance. The highlights of Ainge's career include orchestrating Kevin Garnett and Ray Yeah, but Allen KG was Boston, old, which and Ray Allen was gone. Of the year award, hoodwinking the Sixers in the Jason Tatum deal, and duping the injured Isaiah Thomas to the Cavs for Kyrie Irving. But the best bamboozle trade he managed to pull off was the Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett trade to the Nets in 2013, for which he received four years of the first draft picks from the Nets in a multiplayer deal. Ainge absolutely pleased Nets GM Billy King, who hoped that Pierce yeah, and Ainge would win him a championship instantly. Didn't do much with them damn draft picks. Landed in Boston. However, this was six years later, and they were not the same players anymore. Brooklyn reached second round of the playoffs with Pierce and KG, after which Pierce left the team and Garnett followed six months later. 
Nets' future was buried in the sand because they didn't have any draft picks, and no free agents wanted to come to a lottery team. Well, it was it bad for the five Nets. five years before they got to playoffs again, while Boston enjoyed a plethora of picks and reached the playoffs every year since 2015. Dirk Nowitzki to Dallas Mavericks, 1998. Dirk Nowitzki is a symbol of the Dallas Mavericks, and few people remember that he wasn't even drafted there. In the 1998 NBA oh, yeah. draft, Dirk was selected by the Milwaukee Bucks. He, yeah, they, they, dra- they traded the him. Unathletic seven-footer from Germany. They had their eyes set on Robert Traylor. Oh my the God! Selected that was six. a bad one. Traylor was extremely physical and looked more like a football player, with six eight in height and weighing around 300 pounds. His nickname in college was Track Tractor Trailer. And because the league was much more physical in the 90s, they wanted to add more bulk to their team, which they certainly wouldn't get with Nowitzki. Considering that Trailer averaged 16 points and 10 rebounds for Michigan State University, he was thought to be a much safer pick than the German. Of course, they were terribly wrong. Yeah. Nowitzki became the best European player ever, first the European MVP, and a Mavericks legend. Trailer Ooh, that lasted was bad. seven years in the league and averaged less that than five bad. points and four rebounds per game. Kobe Bryant to the Lakers for Vladimir This should have been number one. Jerry West is probably the This best should have been number. I don't know if they rank him in order. They're just, NBA. you know. Almost every move he but made he should have been number and one. And drafting Kobe was one of his best and most famous deals. The Lakers were interested in a young high school prospect from Lower Marion High School. And they brought him in for a workout. Jerry West called the recently retired veteran Michael Cooper to assist and play one-on-one against the 17-year-old Kobe. Cooper and everybody else thought he'd be able to defeat the young prospect based on his experience and strength. But Kobe absolutely obliterated and embarrassed the NBA veteran. He also showed incredible poise and maturity for his age. And Jerry West was smitten. He later said it was the best workout and interview he ever had with a draft prospect and was determined to do everything he could to draft Kobe. The Lakers were a playoff team and only had the 24th pick, so West knew he had to make a trade. Charlotte Hornets took the bait and sent the draft rights to Kobe for Vladi Divac, a fan favorite in L.A. Divac was more than a solid starting center, but Jerry planned to sign a free agent Shaquille Ooh. O'Neal. In the summer of 96, West completed Jerry two West moves is a that mastermind. the best one-two punch in history and bring three championships to L.A. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to the Lakers, 1975. A happy flip of the coin rewarded the Bucks yeah, but he won it out though. In the 1969 NBA draft and gave them the opportunity to draft the best collegiate ball player ever, Lou Alcindor. And the marriage has been successful at first, crowned with the championship in 1971 and three MVP trophies for Alcindor, mm. who then changed his name to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. However, after Oscar Robertson retired, Milwaukee struggled and missed the playoffs, which prompted Jabbar to give the team owners an ultimatum. He wanted to be traded. The team wasn't as good as he wanted, and he also had a desire to play in a bigger city that would appeal to his cultural interests. He put a list of two teams where he wanted to be traded. It was either L.A. or New York. The Bucks obliged and have sent the best player in the league to the Lakers. In return, they received Junior Bridgman, Dave Myers, Elmore Smith, and Brian Winters. All nope. decent players, but what? neither of them was close to the caliber of Jamal. Nope, not even Milwaukee close. Milwaukee hasn't reached the finals again to this day. And Kareem well, they just won, so this obviously is an old video. Bill this Russell thing. to the Boston Celtics, 1956. Red Auerbach is one of the greatest basketball minds and team builders of all time. Many people don't know that the greatest champion in basketball history, Bill Russell, wasn't even supposed to play for the Celtics. Russell was drafted second overall in the 1956 NBA draft by the St. Louis Hawks. Hawks had a history of all-white teams, and black players weren't prohibited there, but they weren't exactly welcome either. Mm-hmm. Red Auerbach knew that and proposed a trade for Bill Russell. In exchange, the Hawks received two white players, Cliff Hagen and Ed McCauley, who were good players and future all-stars. However, neither of them was Bill Russell, the best basketball player in the world at the time and winner of 11 NBA titles with the Celtics. Mm. Wilt Chamberlain to the Lakers. But I don't know if he'd have won 11 with, with, with the Hawks. considered as the trailblazer player empowerment movement in the NBA. With the practice of signing one-year deals, changing teams on his terms, with the decision as the most defining moment of this era. It's a lesser known fact that Wilt Chamberlain did the exact same thing some 40 years earlier. In 1968, after the 76ers lost in the conference finals to his arch enemy Bill Russell and the Celtics, Wilt was not happy with the franchise. He had a dispute with the owner of the team and threatened to leave to the ABA if they didn't trade him. Wilt wanted to go to Los Angeles because of the lifestyle, other celebrities, and women. He told the general manager of the Sixers he would not play another minute for the team, even if he couldn't play.
play basketball for a year, which would happen if he switched leagues and moved to ABA. Even though their hand was forced, the Sixers yielded too little for a player of Chamberlain's stature. They received center Darrell Imhoff, who averaged seven points per game in his career. Forward Jerry Chambers, who left for the military and never played for the team. Mm. And the talented combo guard Archie Clark, who played just three seasons for the Sixers. Wilt played five more with the Lakers, going to four finals and winning another championship. Scotty Pippen to the Chicago Bulls, 1987. Michael Jordan's Hall of Fame. I don't know. <laughs> you can say it was a bad trade. But I always respected that the first thing he said on stage is that in the highlights of every championship he won, you didn't just see him. You also saw Scottie Pippen. Scottie Pippen was the ultimate Robin to Jordan's Batman. Pip was the best facilitator at his position in league history, aside from Larry Bird and LeBron James. He was also one of the best defenders of all time and an extremely gritty competitor, which was a prerequisite for playing with Jordan. Mm -hmm. However, Scotty wasn't even drafted by the Bulls. He no, went he's to drafted by Seattle. So traded him for Chicago's Olden Polonies because they needed a center. Polonies averaged five points in five years for the Sonics, and Pippen won six championships for the Bulls, just slightly better. Charles Barkley to the Phoenix Suns, 1992. Charles Barkley started his career with the 76ers alongside future Hall of Famers and Dr. J and Moses Malone. After a few years, Moses was traded and Dr. J retired, leaving Barkley as the leader and lone superstar. Even though his numbers were terrific and he was the best power forward in the league, Barkley didn't have enough help and never went far in the playoffs. In the 91-92 season, Sixers missed the playoffs altogether and Barkley had enough. He demanded a trade and they sent him to the Phoenix Suns for Jeff Hornacek, Tim Perry, and Andrew Kane, which was a return of a quarter for a dollar. Barkley won the MVP the following season and went to the finals with the Suns, while the Sixers sunk to the bottom of the league and missed the playoffs in the next six years. Moses Malone to the Buffalo Braves, 1976. Mm. After the NBA and ABA merger, a dispersal draft was made, filled with players from ABA teams that would not participate in the NBA. Moses Malone was in that draft and was selected with the fifth pick by the Portland Trailblazers, not realizing that they just drafted one of the best centers of all time and a future three-time MVP. The Blazers sent Malone to Buffalo Braves, a team that would later become the Los Angeles Clippers. In return, Portland received a first-round draft pick and $232,000 in cash. They would go on to win the title next year, but it was the last one in franchise history, which maybe wouldn't happen if they kept Moses. Yeah. Well, J-Rock says this. To me, the worst trade in NBA history was Kobe being traded from Charlotte to the Lakers. Right? The cl Kobe told the story. The Clippers, he worked out for the Clippers. And they said it was like the best workout they've seen from a, a draftee. And, but they said they weren't going to draft him because they were rebuilding and they didn't think a 17-year-old kid would help them, right? Jerry West saw this brother and said, oh, I got to get him. I got to get him. The only reason I say it was the best is because Kobe's work ethic, his mentality, uh, was only, in my opinion, matched by Michael Jordan. And so I think Kobe would have had that team, Charlotte, uh, in a much better spot. Um, multiple titles, I believe, would have come to Charlotte. But he went to L.A. and the rest is history. Um, Bill Russell won 11 titles, but you got to remember, he had all those Hall of Famers on his team and Red Iron back as his coach. Um, and the era was a lot different then because they didn't have a whole lot of teams back then. But this was a, this was a good video. Um, you might have to check out a few more of their um, of their videos. But what say you? What was the worst trade you think of these trades? I think it was Kobe. Uh, but what do you think? Post your comments down below. Let J Rock know what thought of his reaction to this video. No rhyme intended on that line. If you enjoyed the Great Ones reaction, hit that like button, subscribe, and share. And be sure hit that bell so you can be notified when it is time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J-Rock. Until next time. Mamba, Gigi, and Wakanda forever. If you smell, what J-Rock.
ですか